And just like that, my collegiate career is over. Yeah, just like that. Where y'all want me to start, y'all? Like, where do y'all, where, where, where is a good place to start? This is a Q&A, just answering people's questions, you know, answering everybody what they have to, you know. I know, like, there's a lot of people asking me questions. And, like, there's nothing against anybody that I just couldn't reply to anybody for a long time. I didn't even reply to my mom. <laughs> it's nothing, no, no hard feelings, but it's just like, it's just something I need to just collect myself, you know? Mm. I'm going to start where I stopped. Um, I stopped recording for a while. In that period, like, I just felt like it wasn't the best situation for me because everything was high stakes. Everything was like, you know, crucial. I wanted to be focused. I want to be dead set on something. Starting YouTube and doing vlogs while I was on the road and stuff like that didn't help me as far as focusing so I had to stop that because it was just for my, like the sanity of myself not because I couldn't handle both well technically I couldn't handle both but I just wanted to like you know focus on one thing instead of always like I'm always multitasking or doing two things at once so this time I wanted to really dial in on the ceiling on the season I wanted to dial in on the season Secondly, on top of me not vlogging during the season, it was around the time where I got hurt. I already I had already started feeling it coming, but you know, I wanted to keep practicing hard, keep going hard at it. And yeah, I got hurt. What we once thought was a muscle cramp, it actually was a grade two and a grade one strain in my hamstring. And so when I say grade two, we have the grade one, which is this. This is your muscle fibers. We got grade two is this, and grade three is complete separation. So a muscle tear would be a grade three. So on the verge of that, you know, that really got me, you know? I was, and that's, this is my lead leg, the lead, the leg that I like, you know, that I'm using to snap down to come back to the ground, the most like crucial part of the, you know, how fast I go, you know, that's the most sensitive part. So um, having to battle both of those things, it was, it was a bummer because it was supposed to be a really good season. And like at that time, I was just like, nothing stopping me. Like God, God's got me like, you know, any evil wish against me, you know, re rebuke it. <laughs> but yeah, that was when I got that injury and you know, I was still practicing through it. Four weeks, we, it, I went four weeks without getting an MRI. I mean, I didn't want, I feel like it was partially me because I just didn't want to realize what it was. Cause I was like, yeah, this is not, <laughs> this is not a muscle cramp. I'm, <laughs> I would be, most people would be able to run right after a cramp or like, you know, after a day's rest. I went four weeks four weeks without being able to run at full speed. So, um, yeah, I was going through that doing rehab. We got to the point where I was gonna, like the week four point, I was like, dude, let's, let's just get this PRP. Like, I was still feeling weird after week four, so I was like, let me just get this PRP to put me over the hump so I can actually start, you know, utilizing this time because you know I was able to run but I wasn't able to hurdle so got the PRP at the doctor's office this is so funny at the doctor's office I asked them I was like what's the usual downtime for a, um, a PRP shot and you know they're saying they're telling me something that I already know I just wanted to ask you know them, them questions that you already know the answer to but you just you know want to make sure what they told me was a week at least week to two weeks without doing anything i was like do you guys realize what we do we run for a basically a living like run not doing anything is the worst thing to do in this situation and at this point we were also three weeks away from conference so we had two meets and then the championship meet 
And I was like, so one week, so I only have one week to run and then another week is the big dance? No, I was like, no. It was like, Dio, like, we really advise you. Otherwise, I, I hate to say it, you're gonna be back on this table and hopefully we're not doing worse. We're not doing a, like a, a procedure to repair your hamstring. I was like, no, I'm not doing, I don't care. Like, I don't, I honestly, I'm not about to go out that way. I'm not finna, no. Of course I would, you know, go along this with caution, but I'm not going to completely stop, no. I'm gonna play it by ear. I'm gonna, you know, that's what, that's what I did. And that's basically after four days, I was in competition. And one of the best decisions I made because I was just like, no. We played it by ear. Everybody was playing it safe. You know, I was like, I, I feel like I can hurdle. So I ended up going out there running 13-8 and um, I got beat in that heat. I came in second and I was like, I really let him beat. I let that guy beat me because just, you know, this, this race was for me, you know, just to build that confidence back saying that I can run. And once I got over that hump, the next week, I beat that same guy. And I ran a, a, a PR, my lifetime PR, um, 1351. And it's been, you know, downtrending the whole way. So fast forward to NCAA championships, the regional meet and the, the actual championship meet in Oregon. At the regional meet, I was, you know, at the top, like I was literally like, I felt great. You know, I was, you know, running great, you know, running smooth, even to the point where I'm just like, you know, cruising, I'm cruising. Um, and finals is, that was the first time I re like, I, I got shocked. Like, so there was some weather delay and it kind of set us back. We were waiting out there till 10 o'clock and then they canceled the meet inevitably so we had to come back the next morning which was not it didn't make sense so that morning i felt weird it just felt so weird and you saw it literally when the gun went off i was the last one out of my box i was the last one out somehow by god's grace i still won that heat i'm not saying anything about who i was racing but i was moving i'll tell you that i had to get going and came back and when that heat that the start resonated with me it resonated with me like for two weeks we were just like i was like i couldn't get my feet back under me my fast twitch my like quick feet weren't there like the power was there but i couldn't get my feet down fast and when i got to the when we got to nationals in oregon it was much of the same thing right up until i got to that line and what i told myself if you're gonna run this, make it your like, make it something you'll be proud of at the end of the day. You could say that I did not run a proud race, but I feel like I ran in a way that showed me that I gave it all I had. And it sh literally, like, when I got out of them blocks, I hadn't felt that in weeks, maybe months. Like, I was like, oh crap, like, I'm finna crush. I'm finna crush. I was not ready for it though. I was not ready for it. Like everything was moving so fast to where I just could not react. If I'm trying to hit marks every day and I don't, I, I keep hitting just short of those marks, I'm going to start reaching for that mark. People usually do that. So um, that's what I was doing. And all of a sudden, when you get to that race, you're all like, for some reason, you're hitting those marks but you're still reaching because you were used to doing that, you know? So that's what I did, that's what I messed up in. That's what I messed up with. So like I was hitting past the marks. So I started closing in on the hurdle a lot faster than I usually would. But honestly, after the race, it didn't, like it wasn't real. When I, like I literally was laying on the ground, I was like, this is not real life. I was just, it was crazy. Got up, I was like, now, what the hell did you do? I wasn't in any way, shape, or form looking back like I didn't give it all I had. That's all I cared about. That's not really what got me. What got me was the fact that I could not make it to the next level. When I was going about this season, I was like, we're going to the Olympics. We're going, we're shooting for gold. We're shooting for Tokyo. 
leading up to the NCAA meet, that whole season from March till June, I was trying to obtain a passport in order to fly to Nigeria for the Nigerian trials. And as some may know, the passport registration is backed up all like it's backed up it's hard to get appointments impossible like it's not impossible but it's just extremely difficult so you know i i met i was one of those people that did not get their passport in time and i'm really bummed out about that that's the most that's the worst part about it you know that's the part like you try you try you try you don't get it that's it's hard but um i feel like that type of situation just wasn't meant to be at that particular point in time. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to, you know, look back and be like, oh, I could have because God never makes mistakes. But yeah, that's my situation with the Olympic trials. That's the reason why I was not there. But I want to reiterate to everyone that I'm not done. Not without a fight, at least. Like, I'm not done. I'm going to keep going. I'm just, I'm just in this period where I need me. I need a me moment or need some me time you know i'm not gonna push something that's literally like restricting me for the future i think that i want to of course continue track and field but that's not gonna stop me from anything else that i'm trying to do so me registering for for my masters me looking to get observation hours me doing everything i gotta do to make sure i i, I take care of me and the people around me that's not going to stop. I'm also going to be making videos, of course. You know, the video's right here. I'm going to spend a lot more time doing this. Something that I really like to do. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that on my new channel, Dial the Gamer. Follow that if you want to. It's a new, um, it's a new YouTube channel and a new Instagram channel that I put up, Dial the ga Dial dot the Gamer. So whatever that is, whether it be a job, whether it be school, whether it be track and field, that none of that stops thank you for being there with me like making me feel like i wasn't alone there's so much love and support and expectation that's the reason why you know y'all say what y'all say but there was the, the expectation you have for me so high that i you know want to reach it that much more i thank you guys for that like my friends my family people that don't even know me just you know showing love and support caring asking how i have been um, I thank you guys so much, like from the bottom of my heart. There's really no, no words I can describe that. Thank you guys for getting through this video with me. It's been a hard one. But until the next one, <laughs> that other guy was signing out.